So there's good coffee, and then there's good coffee. This is the latter. Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Juan Londoño and today's video is a Photo Philosophy Friday topic. As we do many times with our Photo Philosophy Fridays, we discuss a quote and then we compare it to something, whether it's photography or life. So today we're going to take a quote um, from Ansel Adams. So again, as I usually tell you, if you don't know who Ansel Adams is, make sure you do a little research, read about him, check out his photography, beautiful black and white landscapes. The quote says something like this. There is nothing worse than a sharp image of a fuzzy concept. Since I've been forgetting to ask everybody to take a water break because I get so excited with the videos, I, I just go, go, go. Uh, and even if I do take a sip, I forget to mention it. Uh, coffee, tea, whatever you're doing today, go grab your beverage. It's good for you. And I'll meet you right back. We're going to start by comparing this quote to photography. This is a photography channel. And then we're going to see how it applies to life. I like to be fair to anybody who's here for photography. So if you are here just for photography, once that part of the video is done, you can tune out and we'll catch you in the next video. But to be honest with you, I think personally that the comparison of this quote to life is a little more powerful than it is to photography and it's going to affect everybody, not just people interested in photography. So if you're curious, please stick around till the end. If you are going to leave us in the middle, remember to like, subscribe, comment and share the video. So I have two ideas and this is four. Two ideas. I do that a lot. I have to, I guess I like talking with my hands, so I have to use both. I have two ideas of what this concept might look like for a photographer. We imagine a beautiful image or images of a place we've been dying to see. So what do we do? What anybody does, you take the trip. But we didn't look at traffic before we took off to see what that was like. If it's local or, you know, relatively local, we certainly Forgot to check the weather in that region, especially if you're traveling to another state or country. We didn't pay mind to the gear we were either taking or needed to take. We didn't do any research. Or simply, we were busy uh, scrambling like we many times are the last minute and we forgot to pack something. And like I recently did in Las Vegas when I was going to the Hoover Dam, I didn't even check if there was an hour of operation. I assume the Hoover Dam is open, it's working the whole time. And we got there like five minutes before they closed. Closed. So what does it mean that the Hoover Dam closes? The gift shop closed and all the tours stopped. So I took some okay pictures, but it would have been so much nicer if we had done that tour. In general, I've done all of these. I've done all of them. I've, sh I've been shooting it long, long enough that I've done all of them. So. Let's talk about these and what it means to us. Not only will we start our journey with a sharp idea of a fuzzy plan, but even worse, we'll end up with sharp images of something we really didn't care for because either it was the wrong gear or the wrong climate or uh, the wrong season, just lack of planning. So to end point number one, right? this image we envision and we take this trip and it doesn't work out for us. Um, the best thing I can say is make sure that your enthusiasm matches your planning, right? Just as enthusiastic as we get to take these trips, sometimes we don't plan enough. Make sure that whatever enthusiasm you're feeling to go to the Galapagos Islands or to Santorini Island or to Paris or to New York, make sure that enthusiasm is matched equally by your planning. The second point where this might apply, or case where this might apply, right, this sharp image of a fuzzy uh, concept, is where we come up with a creative concept. It might be right here in our living room, in our basement, in our home, whatever, even in a closet, right? We come up with this creative concept involving possibly smoke or water or fruits and vegetables, something really cool. We envision the end product, right, what it's gonna look like, and we run out to the store, we buy everything, we kind of leave everything on the table, 
we spend time with our family that day or you have other things to do, we get ready for the evening so we can set everything up and start working. But again, we never really sat down and planned carefully. So here we are, middle of the night, and this happens to me a lot, right? I work really well at night because I get to spend a little time with my family during the day and then I just set up at night when everybody goes to bed and I can do these creative shots, right? I've done a bunch of stuff that way and even won an award with something I did that way. So you're ready to go, you're setting everything up and you're gonna do incense smoke photography and you have your incense. But wait a minute, I don't have a lighter. I don't smoke and I don't have a lighter. I have no matches. And it just happens to be one o'clock in the morning. Oops. Or you happen to be working with fruit and you have a glass table and you place the fruit down and by the time you adjust everything in the lights and your fruit starts drying up and you can see that because it's a close-up shot, right? Or you're doing, you know, uh, slices of fruit and you're playing around with your banana and your avocado. So you're playing around with, <laughs> you're playing around with your banana. That didn't come out right. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know what I mean, right? Let's keep going. I digress. So you're playing around with your, fr <laughs> with your fruit, right? Make sure uh, you don't get in trouble. Uh, watching this video. I didn't tell you to do anything, by the way. So you're playing around with your fruit, with your vegetables, whatever, and um, and everything starts changing color. You know that bananas turn brown and avocados turn, you know, dark gray and it just gets messy, right? So I think this is where planning comes in handy. You got to remember something, and I've done a few of these, not, not an awful lot of them, but I've done a couple of them, uh, or a few. Creative shoots like this, you're going to find that it takes a lot more time to plan it carefully than to shoot it. And when you're shooting it, it takes a lot more time to actually set it up than to take the pictures, of course, like anything else, right? So if it takes you, say, you know, half a day to plan something like this, writing everything down, thinking, writing a schedule, like I'm going to have to go buy everything, keep it in the fridge, uh, set up the table, do all that, put up the lights, you know, I have everything ready um, only when I'm ready, 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 when you've done a couple of test shots with other samples, right? Maybe some sample fruit. Um, then you start cutting everything up and you start taking care of all that. Maybe have some water on the side and a brush that you can brush the fruit down uh, or the vegetables if they need to be, you know, moist looking, right? Keep all of that in mind. It's very important. But the bottom line is I don't want to get into that now. The bottom line is plan as well as you can. And both of these, whether you're taking that trip with that scenery you imagined, or you're coming up with this creative concept, um, both of those will go smoothly and there will be no surprises. Now, in honor of Photo Philosophy Friday, this is where it really gets cool. How does this quote apply to life? How many times have we said, I'm going to be wealthy, or I'm going to buy that exotic car one day, I'm going to have that, or I'm going to live in that beautiful house one day. And then what do we do, right? We keep working, we keep coming home tired, we keep plopping in front of the you know, TV on the couch, uh, eating our dinner while we're watching the news, that's the worst thing we can do, right? And, and then we're burned out by the time the evening comes, we have no energy for anything else, right? So there's got to be a plan where we make these bold because these are bold statements or how about this one i'm miserable at my job but things are going to change basically what we're doing is we're waiting for things to get better or we're waiting for somebody to do it for us and i don't know if that's part entitlement or part just lack of planning right lack of vision if you read enough about millionaires and billionaires like i do these people don't wait for anybody or anything, right? They come up with a plan and they hit the floor running, right? They don't pause for anybody. Um, and they hit it really hard as early on as they can. They make all their mistakes and then they launch. Many of us have the best intentions in the world for us, for our family, for our loved ones, for anybody, even that we want to help. But at the end of the day, Intentions without planning are just dreams. That's what they are. You've probably heard the quote, when we fail to plan, we plan to fail. Our life is in our hands. Our life is our responsibility. 
Unless, of course, you're a minor, you're a little child, and you depend on an adult. For the most part, our life is our responsibility. And I would say teenagers, if you're watching this, if you're listening, at your age, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and, and you know, teens, um, there's a lot you can do as well to guide your parents uh, to the future that you want, right? There's a lot you can educate them on, and there's a lot of educating you can do for yourself. And when I mean you can educate your parents, educate them on your desires, your passions, right? The things that move you, explain to them how much they move you so that they're not pushing you into something they think might be good for you or that they think is good for them, right? At the end of the day, you have to be happy uh, doing what you do. And yes, a job is a job, but we can be a lot happier in one job than we are in the other. If we plan to live our lives with sharp images of clear concepts, whether it's photographic images of clear concepts that we've laid out and they're clear because we've laid them out and planned them, or if we're talking about our life and we're living with sharp images of clear concepts because there are these images of these cars and homes and lifestyle we want and the concepts are clear because we've laid out a plan to get there, all of that is going to require preparation. We're all going to need a plan we're going to have to prioritize and then we have to execute. So that, my friends, is the video. We see how a comment like this, you know, Ansel Adams was very intelligent. Maybe he meant it for more than just photography or maybe he meant it just for photography, right? I mean, he devoted his life to photography. So um, when Ansel Adams says there is nothing worse than a sharp image of a fuzzy concept, um, you know, he probably found himself in those situations many times. And maybe he realized that it applied to life. There's a comment somewhere out there, and I can't remember who said it, and I'm ad-libbing here because I'm trying to remember. And it says something like this, and it kind of applies to this topic. There's nothing worse than doing a task well that should never have been done in the first place. That quote is around time management, right? How some people are so proud of doing something really well and never stop to realize this was a waste of time. I really didn't even need to do this, right? In the grand scheme of things, my priorities, I had to pay bills today, I had to run three errands. These were critical or I had to get my, my you know, transmission oil checked or changed. Uh, we end up doing something else because we don't want to do those hard things or time consuming things. And we'll end up doing something really well that didn't really need to be done in the first place. So there's a lot of similarity between that quote and the one we just read about, right? It's all about doing something that maybe shouldn't have been done at all or that should have been planned better or done more carefully. And we come to the end of the video. Thank you all for your time. You know, I am always so happy to have you on here and I'm so happy always to spend time with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I never take that for granted. I hope you guys are doing well today and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Please join us in the next video. I'm going to place some other video links here that might be related to the stuff we talked about today or maybe something you saw at the beginning with the coffee. Please take care of yourselves and until the next video, ciao for now. That's so crooked now. <laughs> that would have been terrible. Crooked video. It would have been something like, Hello, my name is Juan. Hi. <laughs>